Hey. Fernando. How, how are you doing, Fernando? I'm fine. What about you? Oh, oh good. Very good now. I'm so glad uh, you, you're doing this with me. I wanted to thank you for, for taking the time. You know, um, it's, I think you're, it's the 65th now, you know, Instagram Live. You know, we have Mark Filippusis, Mari Pierce, Emilio, my good friend Emilio Sanchez, uh, Paul Enrico, and so many more. And I'm so honored to have you on here. Thank you so much, Fernando, for doing this. Uh it's a pleasure for me. I mean, only big names. <laughs> uh, you, yes, uh, big names and uh, interesting chats. So it's always fun uh, to have the people on there. Um, so Fernando, we, let's, you know, I know we, uh, we have a lot of Hispano Hablantes. So, you know, every time I do one, at least half of it is Hispano Hablantes. So I'm going to ask a couple of questions in Spanish and a couple of ask, uh, questions in English, if that's good. That's good with me. I mean, uh, you are the boss now. Yeah. <laughs> no, all right. All right, Fernando. <laughs> I, uh, I asked everybody on the show, you know, like, um, you know, a, a lot of parents started, that started their kids. Uh, how did you start tennis? Also with my parents. Uh, my father, uh, he's very fanatic of, uh, of tennis <laughs> and he don't like uh, soccer, football here. That is the most uh, popular sport in Chile. And he always take me to the Davis Cup uh, <laughs> tides, you know. And he always go to play with his friends and I go with him and I start to, I, once I took a racket and I start to hit against the wall and the week after I was okay, in the tennis school, you know, for <laughs> twice, twice a week and then I never stopped, you know, I was playing soccer and tennis, but since I was maybe six years old, I only stay with tennis and keep forever. Nice. I like that. I was reading, obviously, to prepare. Uh, yeah. I read a lot about all my, all my people I have on, and uh, I was reading that your father, you know, he loved to play tennis, and uh, he tried to get uh, you a little bit more into tennis than, than soccer. Yeah, always. I mean, <laughs> and after, when, when I was in kindergarten, we moved right across of the tennis club, you know? So we was all day long there. I mean, after school, I was in the, on the courts and then on the weekends and all the family was there. Everyone was playing with the friends, you know, and and it was a really nice atmosphere with that because if someone on the club don't have anybody to hit with, mm -hmm. he, this person went to my house and, hey, Fernandito, let's go and hit some ball. Said, okay, let's yeah. go. <laughs> I, I, I love that. That was one of my questions. So, so you grew up in San, Santiago? Yes, I grew up uh, in Santiago. So, so was it when you were growing up, like, is, you know, tennis, was it like kind of a lead sport or was it, was it like common that kids played as well tennis? Or, like, or was it just soccer at that time? And, you know, how, how, how was it at that time? Yeah, unfortunately, I mean, most of the sports in Chile um, mm -hmm. is very from the, the elite, but now it's improving a, a lot, mm -hmm. but you have to imagine 35 years ago, and, and I have the lucky that, I, of course, I love soccer. I used to play in the school with my friends, but I love tennis. And uh, in that time, it's not like today. I mean, today you can watch every match on the tour. Yeah. In that time, uh, I remember I record on the VHS, the big mm -hmm. uh, cassette. The big cassette, yeah. The, 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 <laughs> Uh, Wimbledon finals, and uh, and I have to watch that matches all year long, you know. <laughs> and, and with the resolution of TV, I mean, you, I mean, it was you have to be very you have to be very concentrated to see the ball because uh, you cannot <laughs> see the ball. Uh, I, I I can tell you maybe a few finals Becker Edberg, Becker Lendl that I I remember almost every single point of the match because I watched it for many many times. <laughs> I love that. So who, who inspired you for, from the players you were watching on TV? Who did you like, you know, to watch? First, uh, Boris Becker. Mm -hmm. Boris Becker, because he was diving, you know, he was like, yeah. you know, very <laughs> charismatic. And then uh, Stefan Edberg. Mm -hmm. And it was like, I mean, same style of play, different personality. Mm -hmm. And then Andre Agassi, but when he cut his hair, you know, yeah. and he was with the long hair. I didn't like it, but <laughs> after, uh, and, and of course, and and, and did that a big rivals between mm -hmm. Sampras and uh, Agassi was mm -hmm. really good for tennis. Yeah. I remember on the on the night in the middle of the nineties, they play every single final, you know, and and you yeah. take it. I mean, you have your favorite, and uh, and um. 
And that was really important for me because I, I started to watch more tennis. Um, we have cable in the time. <laughs> and uh, and then, yeah, it was Becker, Edberg, and then um, Sampras, Sampras and Agassi. Agassi. Yeah. And so, so, you know, I, I was always laughing, Ivan, when you told me when I was reading about that, you know, if I, you wanted to play soccer with your dad, you know, when Marat Safin, when he was inducted in the Hall of Fame, he said, thank you, mom, for making me play tennis. <laughs> he wanted to play soccer, too. That's why I'm always... <laughs> You know, and I love soccer too. I, I wish, I wish I would have <laughs> with soccer too. It's a, it's a good sport, right? So, yeah. So, at the end of the year, Santa bring me only a tennis kit. You know, I ask for a soccer ball, <laughs> soccer shoes, and I get only tennis racket and tennis balls. And wow, maybe he, yeah. I mean, he confused with the sport. <laughs> I, I love that. So, so Fernando, una pregunta en, en español. Cuando tenías, yo creo. 13 o 14 años mudaste a los Estados Unidos? Así es. Eh, a sí. Miami? A Miami. Eh, en ese tiempo era más eh, difícil eh, viajar, digamos, eh, más, más caro, menos vuelos. Sí. Y fue una etapa súper importante en mi vida. Eh, fui con mi familia, entrené allá, tuve la oportunidad de ir a competir a Europa varias veces. Cosa que desde Chile hubiese sido más difícil. Quizás hubiese podido ir, pero no tantas veces. Y, y lo, lo bueno de una carrera tenística es tener la opción de, de poder competir mucho con, con distintos, eh, distintos culturas, partners, pues, distintos sí. países. Y entonces fue, fue súper importante. Y, y obviamente que, que mi familia fue alguien fue, fue fundamental en ese sentido. ¿Y quién, quién, te, quién te entrenó ahí? ¿Entrenaste en una academia o dónde entrenaste ahí? Sí, estuve en una academia de Patricio Apey, okay. como tres años, y después como a los 16 volví a Chile, uh -huh. y ahí empecé a entrenar, con, tuve Marcos Coliñón, eh, después Raúl Viver, eh, Horacio de la Peña, Larry oh. Stefanki, Martín Rodríguez, Horacio Mata. Wow. No more coaches. Wow. ¿Y todavía But, sigues tener contacto con ellos? ¿O? Sí, sí, con, con la mayoría, sí, hablo, hablo seguido. Eh, de hecho, he ido a ver varias veces a Larry Estefanqui a, a San Diego. Él ha venido a Chile a dar algunos cursos. Martín uh -huh. Rodríguez también, a todos, en verdad. De hecho, el, la persona, Claudio González, que, que me enseñó a jugar el tenis, eh, el otro día estuvimos hablando, que no hablábamos hace tiempo, pero... Pero muy, muy bien, o sea, tengo la, los mejores recuerdos y enseñanzas de, de ellos. All right. I would switch to English again. I, I love that. I switch English, Spanish, English, Spanish. So, so um, in your development, Fernando, obviously you had one of the best forehands of all time. That's, you know, my, and every, like, I, I love to watch you when, when I was younger. And uh, so did, you, did, you, did you feel like at the beginning when you were like a junior, oh, like that shot is like, hundred times better than, than anything else, you know, like, did you, did you feel you have that massive foreign when you were young? Did you, did you train for it? Like team, for example, you know, they, they worked on, you know, acceleration of the ball over his junior years, you know, because he was pushing at the beginning a lot. Right. And then now he has like this massive one hunt and one hander and forehand and everything, you know, did you train for it or was it natural? Or Honestly, I didn't realize that I can hit the ball really hard. So <laughs> I, that was in, in the junior time. I mean, that played against me, but after when I realized that I was hitting the ball really hard, that mm -hmm. was for my favor, you know, but um, because I I saw in that time that it wasn't enough hard, you know, mm -hmm. because if, if I was playing under 16, okay, the the, 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 the boys under 18, they, they, they are stronger. Mm -hmm. if, and then you go to the pros and say, oh, they, they are much stronger. Yeah. And, and there is not much different of the speed of the ball. And, and even I try to hit more and more and more and more, but but I developed something, you know, the acceleration explosion in my forehand, and then I I start to improve, and you know that's day by day, little by little, that's helped me a lot, you know, and and of course I have a a big difference between uh, my forehand and backhand mm -hmm. in that time, and that helped you to improve because everybody was playing to my backhand. Yeah. And but uh, so, so it leveled a little bit out in the end. Yeah, because I mean, of course, I I was practicing a lot my backhand, but in the in the in the matches, I mean, they try to, I mean, they, they give me the best training of of my yeah. of my backhand. Yeah. But uh, I, I 
I always knew that I'm going to win or lose the matches with my forehand. If I have the chances, I'm going to take it. Yeah, I love I love that. When I, you know, when I had when I had Mark Filipusis on, like he said, you know, look, the war. He said, my my serve and my forehand, my best two shots, right? And if they were on, I don't care if Federer was there or Sampras or Agassi. If I had a good day, you know, at least it went to the tiebreaker, you know. So that mentality, probably mm -hmm. knowing that you have this you know, massive, one massive shot and the rest is amazing as well. That helps probably going into the matches when it's on. Yeah, of course. I mean, I mean after I started to improve a lot, my, my serve, mm -hmm. serve and forehand was a really good combination for me. And, and even if I don't have the best day, I knew that m with the most of the players, I'm going to get to the tiebreak. Yeah. And then, okay, let's see. Now, <laughs> I mean, the tiebreak is after two or three points, you know. I, I, love, I love that. Uh, so, Fernando, when you, right before you turned like pro, so I was reading when you were yeah, like around 18, you made like a couple of semis and futures, 18, 17 yeah. ish. So, you know, I played, I, I wasn't something good, but, you know, I, I know how hard it is, you know, to qualify for a future and then go deep in the main draws because everybody can hit the ball, right? And as an 18 year old, especially like you said earlier, the, the physical development comes a little bit later, right? So, so um, that's an amazing achievement already. And then you, you saw probably already you belong, you belong where you are. So how was the transition from those futures to the challengers? I only won one future in my career. I never won a challenger in my career. <laughs> so you went straight? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's tough when you, you, when you make the transition from the juniors to the pro. I mean, yeah. some other players, and they start to play a lot of uh, pro tournaments. Yeah. when they are like 15 or 16 years, you know. In my career, it was really important to make a very good um, junior career because I need to get one good sponsor to mm -hmm. uh, to invest in my career. Uh, and then... Exactly, the, for my, Philippe oh, oh, same thing. Yeah. He got Fila early, you know. That, yeah, uh, sorry I mean, interrupted, that was, you know, like... You... Yeah, that was, I mean, that was a chance I took, you yeah. know, like... Okay, if I if I make it good in juniors, I'm gonna have a good sponsor, and then yeah. I can play maybe two or three years. Uh, and I, I mean, of course, I invested in my career. And you know, in in '98 was my last uh, junior year. I I played three futures in Chile, two semis, and I won one future. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and the year after, uh, you know, I I finished like four or five hundred in the world. So I, it wasn't a good. I mean, it wasn't a good number for me. And then the year after, I won an ATP, ATP Tour in Orlando. I was the last one to get into the qualies, and I passed qualies. I saved a couple of match points, and then I won the tournament. But even, I mean, I, I, um, I make an um, improve from 350 in the world to 140. Mm -hmm. But it took like two, one year and a half to make like the... I mean, the, finish, the, the, the last step, you know, like, mm -hmm. okay, now you're going to, now this is my spot, yeah. you know, because after that, I play a few, uh, qualify, qual I qualify in a few events mm -hmm. in, a, in the US Open, but, you know, it was like a really, I'm not going to say lucky, but I mean, it was tough to qualify, you know, but, but the, in the 2002, that was my year, you know. I, at the end of that year, uh, I, I, I did a few finals from a challenger, never won mm -hmm. a challenger. I started to work with Horacio de la Peña, mm -hmm. and he made me work really hard. And then I did a fourth round of the Australian Open from the qualies, and then I won the home tournament, uh, you know, and th all that happened in four weeks, you know. And then, I mean, of course, I start to get more experience. I start to play the the master series event that was really important because i mean i i, I never knew my schedule because it always it depends on your ranking yeah because yeah. if you if you make a, a good challenger okay you can play the qualies from the from a tour event because i always was thinking about to play on the tour on the main tour i don't want to play future i don't want to play challengers yeah but i didn't have enough ranking to do it you know that's what, you know, what Monica Puig said when I had her on. She said, you know, Monica never got a wild card and she played Futures and then the, the 25K, 50. She played all through the levels, you know, to, to play like uh, WTA main draw and Grand Slams. And she says every time she felt bad or something, she always went back to the roots and she, she told herself, you know, look, I played 
futures. I played challenges. I made it all the way where I am, and that helped her a little bit to go all, to go all through the you know steps. And Mark Filipusis, for example, he just exploded, and he never played anything you know like futures or like whatever. He just made it. You know, he played the big tournaments because he went one one deep run. So for another, what I, what I wanted to ask you is um, Douglas Cordero. He's a good friend of mine. He works with a good friend of yours, like together. Yeah, yeah. So, son buenos amigos y trabajan con Dominic Team. Y Douglas es un buen, un buen amigo mío. Y que, lo que quería preguntarte cuando tú jugaste, ¿con quién trabajaste en, 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 en el aspecto físico? Sí, el aspecto de Douglas. Eh, lo conozco mucho. Es un gran profesional, una gran persona. Buena gente. 10 million percent energía siempre. <laughs> sí, yo trabajé con. También no, no tuve tantos entrenadores ni tantos preparadores físicos. En mi mejor momento estuve con Carlos Burgos, acá de Chile, que estuvimos eh, como seis años más o menos. Okay. Que tuvimos que. Tu, tu, tuve, o sea, tuve <risa> recomendado por él bajar algunos kilos, a pesar de que mis mediciones yo tenía poca grasa, mucho músculo, pero el músculo pesa más que la grasa. Sí. Sí. Y me, me, me agotaba mucho más en los partidos largos. Es por eso que era muy explosivo y trataba de, de jugar muchos puntos cortos. Eh, al bajar de peso, al mantenerme mejor eh, equilibrado, dejé un poco de hacer tantas pesas, que en ese tiempo se hacía un montón. Eh, me sirvió mucho. Eh, sí. Cambio de alimentación, sí. eh, cambio de entrenamiento, mucha recuperación. Eh, ir variando el volumen, porque no es lo mismo entrenar a alguien de 20 años que otro de 25, que otro de 30. Eso sí. es súper importante y relevante a la hora de, de entrenar a un jugador. Entonces, Carlos Burgos me, me, me llevó a mi mejor momento, eh, me guió, eh, le tuve que hacer mucho caso, me costó, <risa> pero me guió para llegar a mi mejor momento físico. Sí, eso es tan importante. ¿Y qué, qué crees que... Ha... En los últimos 10 años, decimos, digamos 10 uh, años, uh, cuando miramos a los jugadores de hoy, como Sitsi Paz y Félix Social y Amy, eh, 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 todos esos jugadores físicamente son tan fuertes y parecía también que 10 o 15 antes, uh, años antes también los jugadores fueron físicamente increíbles, pero yo creo que uh, así, tenemos un poco cambio de más profesional, todo, te, tienen fisios con, consigo en torneos, torneos y todo es un poco, un poco, la nutrición es importante en esos días. ¿Qué, qué, qué crees de eso? Sí, a ver, son distintas décadas y obviamente el tenis se ha profesionalizado cada vez más. No sé, en los años 70 no viajaban con entrenador, en sí. los años 80 viajaban con entrenador, después en los 90 incorporaron a un preparador físico. Hoy día el que puede, lleva una persona, llevan seis personas para trabajar con ellos. <risa> eh, eso es un punto, pero sumado a otro importante también es la información que hay a la hora de recuperarse, de cómo entrenar, de cómo alimentarse. Y yo creo que, que, que lo más importante siempre es eso, o sea, cómo entrenar, porque eh, cuando uno es de la escuela eh, sudamericana de los 90, que hay que entrenar mucho, que hay que correr mucho, hay que levantar, hay que hacer mucho volumen, y eso eh, te ayuda mucho, eh, quizás para trabajar la parte mental también, pero, pero no es algo que te dé mucho tiempo de vida, digamos. No digo que no hay que hacerlo, eh, pero sí los jugadores también al ser mayores van teniendo más experiencia y se van conociendo más. Y esa, y esa mezcla entre un gran profesional con, con el jugador que se va conociendo se van llevando mucho mejor. Eh, no entre ellos, sino que para su carrera. Eh, la alimentación creo que antes se hacía de una forma, hoy día se hace de otra. El entrenamiento, la recuperación, la dosificación del, del calendario. Sí. Eh, creo que es por eso que también que están jugando muchos años más. O sea, sí. cuando Andre Agassi se retiró a los 36 años, fue como, wow, eh, <risa> yo y hoy están llegando todos. Claro, lo de Andre fue hace 15 años. Sí, sí. All right, Fernando. 2007 Australian Open. So you, I saw, I remember you beat Rafa pretty bad in three sets. <laughs> and then you, you played Roger in the final. Um, you know, as I said, I had Mark Filipusis and I asked him the question when you played Roger, Roger's first, like, first Grand Slam he won in Wimbledon 2003, I think it was. 
what, how you went, the mindset, how you went into that match, you know. And, and what I want to ask you is, you know, to be in a final, obviously, those two weeks, what does need to play in all the factors, you know, to, to get to the last day? So, you know, in your eyes, what, what was in this year so special that you made the whole two, year, two weeks and you made it to the last day? Yeah, we did a really good. Uh, I mean, that was 2007, but the, my last four tournaments in 2006, I did three finals mm -hmm. and two against Roger. <laughs> and, and then I have a good uh, rest, good preparation in Chile and then in Australia because I get there like maybe eight or ten days before the, before mm -hmm. the tournament starts. And, and of course, uh, always first matches, you are nervous, you know, yeah. you, you, don't, you don't play your best normally. And you're and, the most then, vul vulnerable too, right? In the first matches, yeah. like if you lose, it's going to be first or second round then, right? That's where... Yeah, it's very disappointing. I mean, okay, yeah. I work a lot for this. I, uh, I travel 15 hours and uh, okay, I don't want to... I, I yeah. came with three persons, okay. <laughs> but I mean, after that's normal, but... Yeah, yeah. But, you know, first two rounds, I didn't play my best and then I have to play later on Hewitt and uh, third round, uh, <laughs> of course, center court at night. And I play um, uh, unbelievable. I mean, first two sets, I did maybe three and four servers against 30 winners. That was not, I mean, never was normal for me that. I mean, always was the opposite way. Uh, and then I lost third set and I won the, in four sets. And, I mean, it was tied, you know, but, but, uh, and then I played Blake, I played good, mm -hmm. won the straight sets. And then after with Rafa, I knew that, I'm like, oh, okay, Rafa, I don't like to play Rafa. Nobody <laughs> likes to play Rafa, honestly. And, uh, and I was like, in the straight sets, you know, I'm not going to yeah. say easy because it's never is easy. Even if you yeah. win in straight sets against Rafa, we play a long match. And and then I play against Haas. I play maybe my best match of my life because I did three and four zeros in, in three sets. <laughs> and then I have to face Roger in the final. I knew that he was the favorite. I'm playing the best tennis of my life. But he had the advantage that he already was like maybe in 15 finals. That was yeah. my first final, you know? Yeah. And I serve, I have a couple of set points in the first set. And, you know, in one point, I remember that I didn't have the conviction that normally I have mm -hmm. because I said, I'm not going to hurry. I'm going to wait for the next one, wait for the next one. And then lost seven, six. And, and then when you play against these guys, you know, the top guys with the scores against you, it's really tough. To get out from there, especially yeah. in that time, you know, I'm talking. We're talking about. That was his uh, prime Roger. too, like five, six, yeah. and seven. That's when he won everything. Else. Yeah, like, like I mean, when the match is even, okay, but when he makes a break, oh come on, okay, he mm -hmm. start to. I mean, he release a lot of pressure and he start to play better and better. And even if when he's the favorite, I mean, the the crowd is gonna be with him. <laughs> That's the. Yeah. I mean, the the big three changed that, you know, because yeah. normally when you watch a match. During all my life, I, you always go for the weak one, you know. Yeah. And yeah. now you go for the strong one because yeah. I mean you want to watch them again. But but it was unbelievable experience. Of course, I played Roger thirteen times. I think I only won one. But uh, you said I after remember. the after the tenth one, you won, right? I was really yeah. You said no one beats me eleven times. <laughs> yeah, that beat us your light is said that I think. Yeah. Nobody beats me, that, and I heard that, and I said, I have to, I have to use it once again. <laughs> so nobody beats Fernando. I Paris. love that. I, I love yeah. So, so for, Fernando, so what, what does, obviously, Federer is like, in that, in that final, Federer is a complete player and everything, but like, you know, like, like Rafa, Djokovic, Murray, Federer, they return amazingly, right? So, so does it put, that puts extra pressure on you every time you, you, you're 30 all, or like, you know, it's a close close score because you know the ball is going to come back if you play number 30 in the world you know you get sometimes a little bit of air to breathe after a serve probably right so is that play, does yeah, that play a little bit in the head or i i always say that every every player give you a chance mm -hmm. maybe roger give you one chance mm -hmm. love, love 15 seconds serve that's a mm -hmm. chance yeah some other guys give you 10 chances yeah but the thing that happens to me when i play roger he makes me think think too much, you know, okay. because he can make chip and charge, serve and volley, yeah. stay back, wait, 
go for it, you know, and and I said, okay, I have to take the control. I, I, I tried to take the control because to, to, take the, to try to get the control of the point, that was my comfort zone, mm -hmm. you know. But I knew that on the first one, he's going to take the, the control. Yeah. And, I, and I, it was really tough because normally you try to force a little bit more and it's there when you miss, you know. So in some matches, I, tr I wait a little bit more for my chance. And I lost six two first set, you know. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I go for it, and I lost six two because I missed, you know. Yeah. I, I, it was really tough to get the balance uh, when you when I played these guys, you know. Especially Roger, because I mean Rafa in that time was more defensive, and yeah. he makes you run a lot. He makes you play forever, but at least you knew what he's going to do. do you, Roger, when, when you said not, earlier, not Roger. When, when you said earlier. You know, was your first final when I had Mary Pierce on there. You know, she said too when she played Arancha. I think it was ninety ninety four, I think, and she lost against Arancha. She said she didn't sleep at all and everything. So, so is that like, do you, do you take something to sleep or how how is it if you're in the first Grand Slam final? Like, do you just try to think, look, it's just another match, but it doesn't work to 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 cheat your brain like that? Yeah, no. In some other matches, I do, I feel that. I didn't sleep, mm -hmm. but I was really calm there, you know, because I was like in my zone. Yeah. Okay, I'm playing good. I feel great. Yeah. I feel I can play five hours. Mm -hmm. That's not a big deal. But but when you are in the moment of the pressure, I mean, that's where Roger was. Mu it's much better than me, of yeah. course, because he he had more experience. He won. That was maybe his ten Grand Slam, I think. Yeah. And but I was, I mean, I was in my zone in that week. Maybe I, in the Olympic Games, I didn't, I feel that I didn't sleep, or maybe some other, maybe when I play in my home tournament, yeah, it was and different. Of... But, uh, but the Grand Slam, of course, I it was my a dream for me, yeah. uh, win a Grand Slam. I, I couldn't, uh, it was a big goal for me because I, I, I make all the schedule for the Grand Slam. Uh, but in that time, I was really calm. I mean, I was playing good, feeling good. So what else you can do? And um, I have a good question from a good friend of mine. That's why mm -hmm. I want to take this question, Fernando. Second serve break point to you. Like, personally, when do you decide to run around and rip, like a killer, killer shot? And when do you play percentage? Is it a feel thing? You say, like, I feel it right now and I go, or? Yeah, it, I, I start to do that on, on the junior time. Mm -hmm. Of course, I did one, one to the fence, one to the <laughs> net. One, you know. uh, but when I get to the main tour, I start to use it a lot because I was putting a lot of pressure. Yeah. And, and in that time, I feel that I was, I have more speed of the ball, mm -hmm. of the most of the players. So every time I have like a break point, an important point, I, I say, okay, this is my chance. I mean, I know if I hit it good, I know that it's, the point is for me. Yeah. Uh, so I put a lot of pressure to the, to the other guy because they start to, to serve to my forehand instead of my backhand. So when they start to know my strategy, uh, sometimes I stay, sometimes I go. And I really feel, I mean, I always go like into the middle of the court, three quarters of the court, inside out. Mm -hmm. And uh, I say, okay, I, why am I going to miss? I mean, uh, why? I mean, of course, sometimes you play in cities like uh, maybe Madrid, that is mm -hmm. faster, it's a little bit up altitude, it's different. I mean, but it's a feeling and I use it because I knew that uh, my opponent didn't like that. And then another question, how did you feel, how did you deal with pressure before and during matches to overcome? Did you have, do you have any, some players have routines, um, they do something funny, they go to movies before a match or like, I don't know, or like write. But did you have anything before matches you like to do to calm you a little bit down? The, the day before, not really. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I was, was, was really connected with my family or my friends. Talking, family time. I mean, what you talk with your friends, what you talk yeah. with your family. Uh, because I stay a lot of on my room. I love room service. 
Um, I love, but, I love uh, this is the best part of it. I'm gonna write that down. I love room service too. <laughs> so you, you call and you wait in the room. I mean, if you go to the restaurant, you have to wait like 45 minutes yeah. for, your, for your food, you know. I mean, you go from the hotel to the restaurant, you have half an hour. No, you're, you're right. You get sick. I, I, mean, I mean, why am I gonna take three hours to have dinner? <laughs> Well, I'm the you. same. I'm the same. I'd rather call yeah. room service. Yeah. yeah. So, but the, before the match, I I have my routine, of course. I mean, I like like have a shower. I mean, warm up, done. Have a shower. It depends of the of the hour of the match. I can have lunch. I can eat something. Wait, very calm. I love music. You know, just. But uh, after when you when you're on the tour, you play many matches a year. Yeah. You know. So the, the pressure is have to be part of you. Of course, in, many times I didn't handle uh, really good the pressure, but I learned with that. Maybe mm-hmm. some other players, they born with, with that. They born uh, and they can handle the pressure. I have to learn about it because um, sometimes I want to hit the ball because I release pressure. It's, mm-hmm. I, did, I hit the ball because I, I didn't want to finish the points fast. I mean, I did want to relieve pressure, so I need to hit the ball. I mm-hmm. feel much secure if I hit hard, mm-hmm. because I with a, with a lot of acceleration. Mm-hmm. That if if I hit sixty percent of my of my speed, you know. Yeah. Okay. That's. I like that. Uh, Fernando, before we come, like two more things, like uh, Olympic Games, obviously, and then uh, before that, I wanted to ask, I asked everybody, um, when you played, still. Was there anything you really like to do, like a drill, like something like a warm-up drill or a regular drill you like? Like, for example, some player said, you know, I like to do like four and cross-court, cross-court down the line, opening, playing point out or mini tennis. Or was there anything you like to do when you were on court to work on? Anything your favorite every time you came on court? Before the match, no, not really. When, when I was 20 years old till 25 years old, my warm-up was... 45 minutes, one hour in the court, mm-hmm. plus the gym before. Mm-hmm. But after, when I start to get older, more experienced, I has, um, I did. I normally was doing a lot of uh, good warm up in the gym, mm-hmm. and then maybe 15 minutes on the court. I don't need more. I need to like loosen it up and start to feel the ball. You know, feel my body. You know, feel the yeah. ball. Uh, maybe uh, in the first round. The warm up was longer, but after was every time shorter and shorter yeah. and shorter. That's what Paul Anacol um, said too about yeah. Federer and uh, Sempras. They learned, you know, like you know, what warm up means just to warm the body yeah. up, and you have to be ready anyway to play, right? So you have to feel good. The body has to feel good. And it's yeah, not about hitting times. three hours. Yeah, I mean, I have a lot of enough time to 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 practice. I have mm-hmm. to save energy. I have to save my focus, and and I. I, I I know that there is some kind of players that if they do few serves I, and they miss, they have to do a couple more. Mm. I mean, I don't mind. Like, okay, I did the movement. Okay, relax. You know, like <laughs> you have to let it go, like flow. Yeah. You know, like. Yeah. Um, but every every player is, is different. different. Yeah. And in junior years, did you have anything uh, in a training session that the coaches made you do all the time, like any drills for your forehand or serve or serve plus one or anything? Um, in, when I when I start to play on the main tour, mm-hmm. I'm talking when I have a good ranking, I did a lot of serve and forehand. Serve okay. and try to hit with the forehand the forehand. first one, okay. you know. Serve and forehand, serve and forehand. And, and wide serves to open the court mm-hmm. so I can make run make. the other guy and, and I always have the control. I always have trouble with my return with one handed back and you know, I couldn't yeah. read, I couldn't react. But uh, when I get maybe 27 years old, I start to do a lot of slice with the mm-hmm. second serve. So I was thinking, okay, I go cross core low. I am, I'm in the three quarter of the course with mm-hmm. my forehand. Inside out. If the guy if the guy goes down the line, I mean, I'm gonna go cross, and and the guy is gonna run in. It's gonna be my opponent, yeah. not me. So, but I mean, doing like the, Federer, um, Federer likes to serve slicer from the deuce, right? Like you said, and then move over to the outside side and hit an inside out forehand, like basically, like. Yeah, I mean, you have you need to have 
your weapon. Yeah. I mean, something that you can get many points with not much effort. effort. You know? I mean, it's going to be effort. Okay, you make the effort during the training session. But training at home or somewhere mm -hmm. is one thing, but warm up is another one, you know, yeah. like for me. Yeah. All right, Fernando, Olympic Games, when you won the gold medal. So I know, uh, I know I have a lot of friends from Chile, so I know how proud you are of your country. You know, my parents are from Croatia, so we, I feel like I have the same connection. We are, we are the same in that sense that we're crazy about sports, right? So the country is just when, uh, when you're in the final. So what did that mean to you to win with your friend, uh, to, to win with Mas uh, Masu, like the, the, the final? So, you know, describe a little bit what feeling that is, because not a lot of players know how to, what it is to have a medal, you know, like in the Olympic Games. Yeah, honestly, most of the players we are playing for to get a, to win a Grand Slam. Mm -hmm. But Olympic Games are more than, I mean, it's a sport. Yeah. And, and I realized uh, in my country, I mean, we only have 13 medals in the history, any color, you know. Wow. And when we get there, I knew that, okay, Chile don't have much medals. And I want to get one. I don't care the color. I don't care if it's, if it's <laughs> singles or doubles or triple or whatever. Yeah. I need. I, so it was I mean, dream week, you know. We get there with Nico. Uh, we went from the States to Athens. And the condition was really tough, especially in the beginning. It was really hot, uh, fast, like the balls bounced so high. I didn't like that that much. And, and then we start winning, you know, we're playing singles and double every day, uh, play, rest, play, eat, sleep, and then the next day. <laughs> and, and then we get there, you know, I, uh, on the semifinals. Uh, uh, you played semifinals, Was it? No, you beat Chich and... Yeah, we beat them in the semifinals. But yes. we beat the, uh, the Bryans brothers in the quarterfinals. Oh, wow. Yeah, so... Um, yeah, that day I remember I, I played against Andy Roddick. I beat Roddick, and then we I beat <laughs> we beat the Bryans, and 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 after we beat the Croatian team, uh, okay, uh, we get relief. At least we have one. Okay, the worst thing that ha happened we have a silver medal, and then we play semi final, and and I lost. I twist my ankle in the second set. But uh, Mardi, I think Mardi deserved that match, of course. I'm not saying that, but it was really painful for me uh, in, in, my, in my soul. Like, you know, like, I couldn't be playing, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and the next day I went to play for the bronze medal. And I have a couple of match points uh, down in the third set against uh, Taylor Dent. And I won 16-14 in the third set. And then my rest time was the ladies final. <laughs> and it was an easy match. I think Justine beat uh, Amelie Moresmo in one hour. Yeah. And then we have to go for the gold medal, you know. And Nico was really important in that time because he had always his really high energy. Uh, he had to play the final the next day, but he's still there, you know. We start to play late. Uh -huh. And uh, he always had high energy. Come out. I mean, and I was really pumped up because I was sad in the morning and then I get the bronze. I was, I mean... <laughs> The feel, I mean, my feelings uh, was changing from A to C, <laughs> you know, in a couple of hours. Yeah. And, and then we have four match points against in the fourth set, six to win the tiebreak. We won six points in a row, and then we won six four in the fifth set, but six four with maybe three breaks because we. We broke and they break back, you know, and then I have to search for the match and we won and, and it was really... Uh, it was, Ke was... Kiefer, Kiefer and Schuttler, right? Yeah, Kiefer Schuttler. And I think it was one of the most important thing in the Chilean sports. Yeah. Wow. How did, you, how did you, when you came back, <laughs> did they have a huge party for you guys when you came back or what, ha what happened? Yeah, after that, we went to the US Open, big yeah. mistake. 
they got I lost first round, he got like second round. <laughs> and I said we have to go. I mean if if, if we went back, I say, okay, oh, hey, we go back to Chile, we don't care <laughs> for this year, we don't care the US Open, but um and no, we get here like three or four weeks after. Um we went in a cabrio bus <laughs> from the city and everybody was going out, 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 thousands of people. And the president was waiting for us for her wow. breakfast. And then it was like 10 or 50,000 people waiting outside the, the government palace. You know? And you see, you, you achieved that not with the whole team of 10, 11 players like soccer. Only you and Nicolas, you, you too, you too did that. You know, that must feel, you know, usually the soccer team, everybody's holding the trophy. Only you too. Yeah, that's right. I mean, and, 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 the, and the way that happened, you know, like everybody was watching the, or at least following the results. Uh, day by day, you know, yeah. and, and we play long matches and uh, we keep going and the people realize that, you know, and we feel a lot, a lot that until today. I mean, this happened 16 years ago and the people still remember about this. And then last question. Are you still, are you still involved like in, in tennis? Like, do you, like in Chile, do you, do you have academy or are you, are you still uh, in it? Yeah, I have a club, a small club. Um, I have an academy, of course, with a lot of kids working, uh, not on the, um, how do you say, not the high competitive, you know, yeah, like for, the... for the moment. Yeah, no, no, I'm not worried about that. I'm worried more with the kids now. I love the competition, mm -hmm. um, but uh, I just have a, a son. He's seven, seven months old. Uh, that changes. So, yeah, That's change crazy. my my style of life and yeah. of course my view of life so your first your I'm first son like your first kid yeah, yeah first kid that changes so, everything yeah yeah and i'm so happy i mean yeah. of course we are having a lot of travel with this uh, coronavirus yeah. but uh but are we gonna go through and i miss my family i my my, my sister my old sister lives in miami yeah. my father lives in like in another city in chile but my mom is at home now, uh, of course, with my wife. Uh, but uh, we have to do, I think there's many things to do in Chile in tennis. And of course, in, in the States. I love to be in a tennis court. I love to compete. I love to to make, try, help the people improve. Even, I mean, I don't care the level. Of course, you always think One. about the high level. <laughs> but if I can see someone, they can improve the forehand, you know, the backhand. I'm more than happy to do it. Well, I love, I love that. So, and Fernando, you know, like Tennis House, I started this five years ago. And my idea was, you know, I'm, I was born and raised in Germany and people didn't like to share. And when I was young, I was always like, you know, there must be, how can I use the internet, you know, to, to share and give info to people that are in South America and Africa and, and Sweden and everywhere in the world, right? So I think the internet is a great platform to, to, to share coaching. And what I... You know, what I wanted to ask you is if you guys ever or if you own court and you have a coaching video or something, I, I would love to share it on my platform because this is the idea I had with Tennis House. And now it's just growing and growing. You know, I'm 40,000 here and, you know, and, and I just love doing that. I just love to give back because I think, you know, the Internet can be used in a good way and in a bad way, obviously. But the good way is, you know, that we can share things and, and people who maybe do not have so much money, they, they see us. I, you know, we're sharing drills from, let's say, from you in Chile, and they say Fernando teaches the foreign like that. That is so priceless, and it's it's so massive and so powerful. You know, when I see sometimes how many people I reach with a post, hundreds of thousands, you know, you start to shake because that's five football stadiums full, you know. So, so if you ever have anything, I would love to share it, you know, that you just copy me on there, and then I'll share it because I think, this is something very powerful, the internet. Yeah, I, I, um, of course I will do it. I mean, I like that you want to share, you want to give, because when in the time when you share and you give, that force you to keep learning. Yes, and every day. Um, I, re I retired eight years ago and I even I watch TV, I watch uh, tennis, of course, I'm, <laughs> and I keep learning. I keep yeah. learning, you know, um, and I always try to give all that I know and I know that I'm going to receive more and I'm going to keep learning. So yeah. I will, I will, I will uh, post you if, if I'm going to do it. 
I, w I would love that. Look, I can't thank you enough because, like, you know, guys like like you and, you know, Emilio Sanchez and Arancha are good friends of mine. Emilio did one with me. You guys give so much back. And thank you for all the years you played because I watched so many matches and it brought me so much joy. And not just me. I speak for hundreds of thousands of people. You know, like, uh, thank you so much for everything you did and continue doing. I really mean it from the heart. Thank you for the invitation. Congratulations on your, what are you doing for, for tennis? And here we are, you know where I am? And I can, I'm happy to, to share a few things. And so, say, say one more so thing much. to, to para todos los hispano hablantes. Una, una palabra última para los todos hispano hablantes. No, <laughs> agradecerte por la, por la invitación. Siempre eh, muy contento de compartir experiencia o conocimiento. Siempre yo muy abierto a entregar a recibir también, porque esa es la gracia de esto, aparte que con el internet, como estábamos hablando antes, esto se hace mucho más amigable poder compartir con gente de otros lugares del mundo. Sí, I couldn't agree more. Uh, Fernando, eres muy buena gente, es un honor, um, thank, I can't thank you enough, so I wish you all the best to you and your family, and then let's stay in contact a little bit, and I would like to share some stuff from you, your work as well, that would be awesome. Thank you very much. Thank you, Fernando. Bye-bye. Hasta luego. That was fun. Uh, I forgot my Spanish a little bit. I used to live there a while, but uh, I think it was, it was okay. Guys, thank you so much for ch uh, tuning in. Uh, as you see, very humble person, very, very nice man. Uh, that I, I felt very comfortable, and I love doing this one. That was really cool. With some great insights. Y sí, para todos los hispanos hablantes, muchas gracias. Um, ha sido muy bien, yo creo. Um, sí, hace, hace mucho tiempo que, que yo vivía en España, pero yo creo que todos me, que, que me entendéis. Um, sí, la, la próxima vez tendré Johan Crick. Y um, sí, intento a tener dos más la semana que viene, a uh, fin de semana. Uh, yeah, Johan Crick is going to do one with me, guys. I'm working uh, still the US Open coming, so it's harder to get some the, the, the players. So I'm going to have some more coaches. And um, thanks, everybody, for doing for joining us. I All right, guys. See you soon.